What's up, G supporters? It is Gabe back with another video, and today I'm gonna be going on an interesting weather rant. But before I get to that, cop the merch at GabeCurtis.store. If you have been following my channel for a little while, you would have known I do forecast the weather, and I am only 17. But that's not the crazy part. I started my own weather service, G Weather, back in 2017 when I was 12 years old. Although when I started coming up with my weather predictions, it wasn't my very own weather predictions as I looked at various weather apps and weather services and just combined them all into my own hypothesis. It really wasn't until 2018 until I got the chance to connect with local meteorologists and they recommended weather models and ever since 2018 I've been actually looking at raw weather data to come up with my own true hypothesis. Although in summer of 2020, I moved from Western Oregon over to Eastern Oregon, where there are not any local news stations covering the weather. The only local coverage we have is from the National Weather Service. Their office is about an hour or two from where I'm at. But I'm gonna be honest, they're not great at forecasting the weather on this side of the state. Although the National Weather Service is still a little bit more accurate than the news stations in Western Oregon trying to cover a very small portion of Eastern Oregon when they do occasionally just because they are not local and they're focused on the other side of the state, which in my discovery is easier to forecast the weather over there than over here due to our complex terrain. Just a few months after I moved over to Eastern Oregon, I actually got a job forecasting the weather at our local internet TV station, which is a big game changer because there's nothing like it in our region. And a lot of the time I've been able to more accurately predict the weather than any other weather service in the state. So let me show you an example of that. So on screen, this is from one of my favorite news stations from Western Oregon is KPTV Channel 12. This specific weather forecast is from this past Tuesday evening, August 2nd. Notice Legrand's low temperature of 58 degrees. Although if you scroll back all the way to the night of August 2nd, you can clearly see that the low temperature ended up being 51 degrees right there, 5.56 a.m. A couple weeks ago, I created a chart that I now use every single day. I insert high and low temperatures from raw model data and compare that to the real observations across various weather stations that I implement into my weather forecast for EO Live TV, which is the local internet TV station I work for. And if we go back, August 2nd, 2022, I inserted these temperatures at 4 p.m. I decided to go with the GEFS downscaled model and I correctly predicted that low of 51 degrees. Looking back on KPTV's forecast, that low of 58 actually comes close to this 59, which is from the European model. And it probably was the European model because this forecast was released a few hours after I insert these temperatures and that's when the new run of the European comes out. So it probably was truly 58. And don't get me wrong, I love the European model. When I lived in Western Oregon, I used to use that all the time. And in terms of the conditions, how much cloud coverage is around, is there a chance for thunderstorms, rain, snow, fog, whatever it is, it's one of those models that is really accurate and I still depend on. But when it comes to temperatures on this side of the state, it has a warm bias at night and a cold bias during the day. Not the case in Western Oregon, but for some reason where I specifically live in Eastern Oregon, the European model can't handle this complex terrain that we live in. If I didn't have history forecasting on this side of the state, I would have gone with the European model, 58, whatever, 59 degrees, because I use that all the time on the west side. But after forecasting here for almost two years, that's where I changed my thinking. Same deal with the operational GFS. It's similar to the European where it's forecasting too warm at night and too cold during the day. That's why I specifically picked for this date the ensemble downscaled version of the GFS, meaning that it's configuring data differently to work better in this complex terrain while still having the general forecasted conditions as the regular operational GFS. But that also can be complex sometimes because the GFS is one of the major models across America and it's available to most services and weather apps on your phone because it is free and 
it is lower resolution, meaning if it doesn't produce enough moisture or enough cloud cover versus what's actually happening, that the higher resolution models, like the European model, can catch up on. The downscale temperatures aren't gonna help in that case. And that's why if you go back a day before, on Monday, August 1st, you can see the forecast from KPTV shows a low of 66 in Legrand. And if you go back to the observations on the Legrand Airport weather station, you can see that it actually says a low of 64, which is only two degrees cooler. Going back on my chart here, I actually said 52 for a low because I was going with a model that didn't have as much cloud cover as what we actually saw. And there are some wildfire smoke spilling in from California, which I forecasted, but I wouldn't think that would take that much of a difference off of those temperatures. So that's why I sticked to the GEFS downscaled. And yet look at this, the European in this case was the most accurate, which is what this new station went for. So that's only occasionally that the European and in this case the GFS are somewhat right because yeah, 66 European, 62 GFS and it ended up being 64, that's right in the middle. It just happened to be that way that cloud cover in haze held down that temperature and then the warm bias at night happened to come true. But as you can tell, it's both the European had a high of 88, the GFS had a high of 91 and we hit 93, which is only a degree warmer than the GEFS downscale that the model that I went with and the high temperature that I went with for that day at EO Live still ended up being more right. That's why I created this chart because you have to look at trends. You can't just go with one model 100% of the time. And I did that for a while. I mean, when I got into more forecasting my own predictions, I just stuck with one forecast model in terms of temperatures and just stuck with it. When I got it wrong, I was like, man, this sucks. But I never made an effort to figure out how can I change this? Usually on any given day, I either use the MBM or GEFS downscaled in my temperatures, but I can never tell you which one of those models can be used for a specific location. I make that decision the day of, right before I go film my weather forecast and publish it. Because I have to look at these trends to be like, okay, this model messed up here, compare this to the observations, why did this mess up? Okay, I'm gonna go with this model. Another example, the NDFD, which is similar to the MBM, but the NDFD is specifically the National Weather Service's weather model that they use across all their forecasts nationwide. Most of the time, the MBM is still slightly more accurate than National Weather Service's NDFD. I and mean, if you looked at my old weather videos from maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago, I put more of the operational GFS and European into my temperature predictions because there would be that occasional moment when one of those models actually ends up being right. A specific example, I remember back last New Year's. I remember the operational GFS was showing widespread temperatures into the negative teens and negative 20s the morning of New Year's Day. And I was like, no, there's no way that can happen. I believe I stuck with the MBM and said an average low temperature around zero degrees with a few spots dropping into the lower negative digits, but I never in a million years thought it was gonna be what the GFS said. I believe Legrand that morning of New Year's got down to like minus 22. That's why I have the chart so I can look at the trends, know the difference between a temperature bias and temperature accuracy. I even remember coming out of that cold spell when we got more snow on top of what we already got. I believe the MBM and the National Weather Service were both showing loads around 30. And I took the European in this case because I saw how cold it was before and I was like, I'm gonna stick to my guns on this and make this right this time. And it ended up being like 21 degrees for a low. So then if you're asking, why am I keeping these operational models on here if 80% of the time they're not accurate? It's because those 20% of the times they're so accurate, no other weather service saw that coming. But I created that chart so I can feel confident going into it. And if there is a point where I'm inaccurate, I can quickly catch that and get back on top of the weather accuracy here in Eastern Oregon. Hope all of you enjoyed this. If you did, drop a like, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific for a brand new video. Peace out.